Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and this is tutorial number 48 and in this tutorial I'm going to speak to you guys about the text area element that you can add into your form and if you guys don't know what the text area element does then that is basically that big block of <laughs> typing space that you can uh, type a whole big message into say like an email or even a YouTube comment or something like that so it basically just gives you uh, more space to type something than an actual input type of text. So uh, to get started let's go ahead and add this text area tag into our page. So text area if I can spell it correctly and I think I'm just going to duplicate that and <laughs> I'm feeling very lazy at the moment and put a closing slash in there. Okay and then I'm going to give this text area an attribute and you can probably guess which attribute it is it's going to be the name attribute and uh, the reason why we give every one of our elements a name is because whenever the user fills data or data or data I don't know how you guys like me to say that word but um, I say data and a lot of other people say either data or data um, data or data. <laughs> so anyway, whenever the user fills data or data into this um, text area, uh, we need some way of identifying that data and we're going to uh, identify that by the name that we're going to give this text area. So I'm going to give this text area a name of story because I'm going to ask the user to tell me a story. So tell me a story and I'm going to add a break tag in here for display purposes but now uh, whenever the user was to visit this web page we get this um, question over here or <laughs> rather a like command tell me a story and then the user actually has to tell us a story type it in here okay uh, and then I'm going to speak to you guys about two other attributes that we could place into this um, text area okay and uh, both of them are actually for resizing this text area so right now you can see we're able to resize it and make it as big as we want but by default uh, whenever we refresh this uh, the text area appears to be quite small so we can make that a lot bigger if we go back to notepad and we could add in two other attributes. I'm going to add in an attribute of rows and I'm going to set that equal to 15 and then I'm also going to add in an attribute of columns and I'm going to set that equal to let's say 60. Okay and rows are basically how high you want the text area to be and columns are basically how wide you want the text area to be but this is not a measurement of pixels it's actually a measurement of um, characters so right now uh, if we were to take a look at this um, text area without refreshing the page I can add in one two three so by default my amount of rows is three rows and my columns well let's go ahead and find that out now so let's go three four five six seven uh, 8, 9, and 0, and okay, so that's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2. So by default, our amount of columns over here is basically uh, that 10 plus this 10 uh, plus those 2, so 22. Okay, uh, and now we can go ahead and actually refresh this, and you can see it gets a lot bigger because now we're actually using the rows that we specified here and the columns that we specified here so we got a lot more space but you can uh, you guys can also use CSS to uh, change the width and the height of this uh, text area so if you guys don't want to use um, inline attributes like this then CSS is a much better option actually so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just save that like that because <laughs> uh, that's all we have for this tutorial 
and um, yeah in the next video I'm gonna be speaking to you guys about all sorts of buttons that we can use on our web page so uh, come back for that and until next time uh, don't forget to subscribe please feel free to leave a comment like and share this video and I'll see you guys in the next video